there's a period in my career where my music was, wasn't kind of gaining any traction with the audience. So mm -hmm. we went a very quiet passion. It would have been very easy to just stop then and give up. What's the point of experiencing all of this cool stuff if you just, you know, your, your wife or the person you love is back home and they don't get to experience it. Fidget House was a movement that was kind of started in, in the UK <clears throat> and got really big in the UK and then got really big in South Africa as well. I don't have management. Even since the beginning? Yeah, no, I don't have, I don't have management. Because the question then is, why do, you, <laughs> why do you decide to do everything solo? Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talks and I'm here with Cal Watson. What's up? <laughs> So you were originally born in, was it Johannesburg or yeah. somewhere else? Yeah, born in Johannesburg, lived in South Africa basically my whole life. Yeah. Um, are your parents from there as well? Parents are, are, well, my mother's from there. My father was actually born in Zambia, which is a country, mm -hmm. another country in Africa. He moved into, uh, he moved into Johannesburg when he yeah. was a little bit older. So yeah, but I mean, I've, I've yeah, born and bred in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And your dad? Is his career in music, or I know he's really into music. Yeah, right? he's he's retired now, but um, back in his heyday, yeah, he he ran a record label. He was in bands, he ran publishing companies, he did all of that kind of stuff. Wow! So, what, um, what kind of music was it? It was uh, it was sort of South African, mainly South African gospel music. That towards the end um, of his career, um, but he's he dabbled in like rock bands when he was younger, <laughs> and, like, all kinds of all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, jack of many trades. <laughs> How about your mom? She's uh, She had a few jobs when she was younger but um, she just became sort of a housewife when uh, me and my brother were born mm. and she kind of just stayed at home and supported us and just lifted us to yeah. school and <laughs> helped us do what we wanted to do basically. Yeah. yeah. And what kind of music was playing in the house when you were growing up? Oh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, <laughs> Steely Dan, Fleetwood Mac, really good um, Good old stuff. So I grew up kind of really being surrounded by strong music and with, I've, I've kind of grown up with good taste. So well, mm -hmm. that's what I like to think at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and were you, you had like classical training, right? Yeah, they, um, it was funny when I was, when I was younger, um, they didn't really, my parents didn't really, I mean, they asked me if I wanted to do music and it wasn't really saying that I, I said to him like, I really want to take piano or anything like that. Um, but when I was around sort of eight years old, I took a piano and I uh, started going for lessons. And I took it pretty much all the way until I was about 15 at school and then I, I dropped it because I actually didn't enjoy like the, <laughs> the theory part of it, oh. ironically. Um, but yeah, that's, that kind of gave me like a really good foundation for, you know, that helped me kind of get where I am now. Mm -hmm. Did you perform with piano? Like, did you compete or? Not really, no, and I never really, I never really took it like that, you know, it wasn't like a competitive thing for me, it was more kind of the, the enjoyment. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I basically only played like one type of, uh, one type of music, and it was sort of like jazz, rags, and blues. I still remember the, the book that I, I had, <laughs> um, finished two of them actually. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was, it was good times. Did you like school growing up? Yeah, I don't know, as much as like anyone likes school, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't hate school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I got along with people and stuff, so yeah, yeah it wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. the, the ironic thing is that I actually like, I, I quit taking music at school and now I'm like, my whole life is just basically yeah. surrounded by music. So, <laughs> so ironic. Did you go to a separate music school or what do you mean you quit music? No, no, so it was a, a subject at school. Oh, basically. So, so you like just out of all it. the subjects, I just basically dropped it, yeah. But what kind of careers did you think you were going to do at that point? So the, the funny thing is, like, okay, I, I didn't know what career I was going to do up until like two years before I, I finished high school. Um, but the funny thing is, I, I didn't really ever think of being a like a DJ or a producer or anything like that so I mean I used to mess around with um, with making music and stuff when I was younger just like a teenager and everything um, but it was never like I never had that kind of goal of like saying to myself I want to I want to be a DJ I want to be a producer it just all kind of happened like really really organically mm -hmm. yeah what were you doing in your free time like after school I used to wakeboard a lot oh yeah so uh, we lived near a, a cable a cable wakeboard, um, 
and I, I did that for, geez, I don't know, almost 10, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, competitively and traveling oh, wow. overseas as well and stuff. Oh really? Where, where yeah. did you travel to? Uh, I think we did Australia, uh, Philippines. That's so cool. Yeah, it was it was a cool time, and I mean, like when I wasn't at school, I was I was there. I was riding, and yeah, that that took basically all of my time. Wow. Yeah. And you were you like earning a having a earning off it, like winning no. competitions? No, just no, no, for fun? no, not at all. Is that <laughs> the sport like costs so much money to do? Um, my parents were actually just really supporting the whole process, you know, and just like allowing me to do it. Your dad got you the software, right? The music software. Yeah. So when I was when I was about eleven or twelve, my father actually brought home a copy of it was called EJ, and like all of the loops were already pre-made, and you just kind of had to like put them together, and you could make them into like a, structure them structure them into a song. And uh, I started messing around with that. And I messed around with that for a couple of years, and then it all kind of went from there. So from there, I, I got like uh, I think it was Fruity Loops, and then I went on to Reason, and ended up on Cubase. Was that and something that clicked to you, like when he first gave you the software that you're like, yeah. wow, this is so exciting? I still remember, I still remember actually messing around with it the first few, like for the first few days, and just thinking like this is freaking awesome. Um, and it was about it was about that time where I knew that I could like put. I mean, I used to put tons of time into writing music and it was for no reason at all, really. It was actually just to, like, just purely because I enjoyed the process of actually just, like, writing music and putting it together. Mm, writing um, how? Like, on the piano or...? No, 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 just on the on the computer, oh, just on, okay. the, on the software, just kind of messing around and not to release or anything. Obviously, I didn't even think about that back then. But it was just to... It was just a whole process that I really enjoyed. Did you... So, who were, were you listening to anyone at that point who were making music from the computer? Yeah, I mean... Once I started messing around with house, um, I started like buying um, mixed CDs and stuff. Like dance, it was like dance compilations. Right? Yeah, dance yeah. compilations, and that kind of that kind of introduced me to some artists. And then once I found Beatport, um, it just kicked off totally there into like the underground. Obviously, mm. the mixed compilations and stuff were all pretty uh, pretty commercial things. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Let's let's not get ridden over. Yeah. That'd be After good. This. Ah, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, once once I found Beatport, it all kind of <laughs> check it out. Uh, once I found Beatport, it all kind of uh, it came together into the underground. Mm -hmm. What and, year was this? Uh, oof, it was maybe I was maybe seventeen, mm -hmm. eighteen. So I don't even know what that is now. <laughs> I think it must have been around two thousand and five. Mm. Yeah, maybe a bit later. So this was like really early days of yeah like yeah yeah music. and I mean from there there I managed to find the artists that really started kind of inspiring me and and like helping me to actually create my own sound mm. um, like the the fidget guys back in the day it was a movement called fidget house yeah and it was it was like switch her speaker junk Sindon, and they're all making like this bass orientated house music um, that didn't kind of like take itself too seriously and the whole the whole vibe was that the bass line kind of drove the, the whole song and that's kind of like what got yeah. me my sound, yeah. <laughs> and was it really accessible to find music back then in South Africa? Like the, the house or the bass? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's like, the internet makes it easy to find it anyway. So it wasn't like I was like going into record stores and flipping through vinyls mm. and stuff. It oh, was so there's a lot of like uh like house music already online back then yeah 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 i yeah. mean well yeah so i remember like i was finding a lot of stuff from limewire which wasn't really <laughs> yeah. that different it's kind of yeah, hard yeah, to access yeah. in hong kong the the, yeah. the thing about the thing about beatport and track it down is that it gave me a place to like actually find really strong underground tracks mm. um i mean it, it was it was pretty easy to find yeah on beatport yeah. and those kinds of sites did you have any peers who were making music on their computer yeah, actually, come to think of it, I did. Um, not many though. I was the only. I was the only guy in my like friends group that was into that kind of stuff. Oh wow! Um, but I mean, as as I started gigging and, and stuff like that, I started building a bit of a like a friend group of guys who were also into it. Mm. And I, I can remember even like sitting for hours with one of my mates, just like looking for those elusive tracks that you heard and like it dropped in a, in a mix somewhere or like 
wow. on a YouTube video somewhere and like trying to find these things. <laughs> and most of the time you'd never find them. Yeah. And they come out like two years later. <laughs> Can you describe what the scene was like in South Africa back then? Yeah, I mean, when I was getting into it, it was kind of exciting because Fidget House was a movement that was kind of started in, in the UK <clears throat> and got really big in the UK and then got really big in South Africa as well, like that we kind of adopted that sound. So for us, we were, we were all like, everywhere, everyone in South Africa was playing Fidget House. Like that was, that was what you heard when you went out. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, the scene was pretty good. I mean, we were playing a lot. And yeah, I'd say it's definitely, it was definitely healthy. Yeah. yeah. After high school, I uh, went to university. I think you guys call it college. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a degree in audiovisual production management, which is oh. basically video editing and that kind of stuff. Oh, so you were always into video as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always been into video. Actually, <laughs> I went to like do one of those aptitude tests when I was uh, just about to finish at high school. And he was like, yeah, you need to go and do video editing, basically. So <laughs> that's why I did the course. Yeah. And I did, I mean, I did used to edit my own videos, like... Um, the wakeboarding. The wakeboarding, exactly. <laughs> we used to, like, my brother used to used to film me riding and then I used to like go home that night and like cut all of the clips together and stuff so it was always like a part of my life mm. growing Did, up so you thought you were gonna be like a professional videographer or yeah I mean uh, honestly uh, <laughs> I'm just like kind of a go with the flow kind of person so once again I didn't have like any major plans but I knew that I enjoyed it and I was good at it so I just uh, I turned it into saying I could make money off of yeah yeah. After college, what happened? After uni? After uni, well, I met my wife while um, I was in university. Oh. And from there, um, her brother was in the music industry at the time in South Africa. And um, it was right about when I, was, when I was making music for fun, like I wasn't releasing or anything like that. And um, Tash, my wife, heard the music and she was like, you should definitely play this for my brother. <laughs> and so like, I sent a bunch of tracks to him. And basically, I got my first signing through him. Oh. So my first ever release on Beatport was because of that. And it all kind of went from there. Did you have like a fan base before he put on Beatport? No, not at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> so you just no. become 100% believed in you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was, he, yeah, it really did basically kickstart my career because from there, I mean, I started making music to actually put out which changes things because then you have like a little bit of pressure on you like you mm. have to make good music now you're not just you're messing around for fun you know yeah uh, and yeah like that that was kind of the kickstart for the whole process mm -hmm. yeah. you know do you remember like how else um like a lot more people find your music back then but, like what gave you the growth initially yeah, i don't even honestly i don't even i couldn't even put like my finger on a certain point um it, to me, it looks like it happened really organically. Mm. So, um, I released on a South African label and, n I mean, it didn't have a huge amount of reach. It, it didn't reach that far, but it was a platform at least. Um, and then I got to do a remix for a South African who had moved to the UK. Um, and that did pretty well on Beatport, actually. That was like my first track that went into the charts. Oh, wow. And it actually did like really well considering. Um, and I think from there it became a little bit easier because then I think some people in Canada uh, started uh, taking interest um, and then obviously also the UK labels so yeah it all kind of went from there. Mm -hmm. How did you meet your management? I don't have management. Even, even since the beginning? Yeah no I don't have, I don't have management. Because the question then is why do, you, <laughs> why do you decide to do everything solo? I don't really know I mean I can I can handle a lot of the stuff myself and I always, I always have um, and it's always been manageable. Um, obviously, uh, I have booking agents in the different territories and stuff, um, which handle that kind of the, the DJing booking side of things. Mm -hmm. But from like a creative, artistic, like artistic point of view, management point of view, um, I actually kind of like having the control yeah. and the ability to, to say like, you know, I want to do this or I don't want to do this, and like I'm pretty <laughs> I'm pretty responsible, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not like. Uh, this crazy dude who like parties super hard yeah you know is it difficult though because like a lot of managers do the networking but you have yeah. to focus on making the music yourself yeah yeah, yeah. It, it gets like it gets a bit tricky sometimes to to balance everything 
Um, but I mean, I, like, I, like I said, I'm, I'm handling it. Mm -hmm. It's working at the moment. So. Yeah. Do you think it was from your father who kind of like mentored you on the business aspect or just kind of you figured it out? He or? definitely, he definitely helped me on the, um, on the production side and understanding kind of the uh, ins and outs of, you know, selling music and stuff like that. But I didn't really have anyone to pre necessarily prepare me for like touring and, and all of that kind of stuff. That was like a whole different can mm -hmm. of worms. So whenever people like approach you to manage, you kind of just turn them all down? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's so cool though. Pretty much. What I mean, of, I've, yeah. I've, had a, I've had a few people, um, a few people and a few companies kind of follow up with me. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the answer's always been the same. It's yeah. like, it's working right now. So let me just keep, keep mm -hmm. going at it. What kind of advice do you have for musicians who want to, who want to do everything themselves? Prepare yourself, um, because if everything takes off, it gets really busy really quickly. Mm -hmm. So you really have to like be responsible and set time aside. Like it sounds crazy, but I can spend like hours just catching up on emails and stuff, which is usually not something like the musician or the artist would like be expected to handle. But um, if you're doing it yourself, you've got to handle all that stuff, and it and it stacks up quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after college, were you already like living off music, or did you have other jobs? No, I still have another job. Yeah. Yeah, I still uh, I'm still a video editor. Oh. By day. So yeah. you always kind of did the two. So I've but always, you never needed to do like a a full time job or like work at a company. I, I did. I worked. I worked full time for a long time. Like the company I used to work at before, I worked there for like six years, and that was basically a year out of or year and a half out of college, two years out of college. Um, I worked there for six years. What was it? It was also video editing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, so no, I've, I've had full-time jobs and even the job that I have now is flexible, but it's still kind of full-time. Yeah. Uh, just with a very, very, very understanding boss. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. What, um, like what types of videos do you edit? Uh, it's mostly like, it's mostly corporate stuff and some TV, TV stuff, TV mm -hmm. ads and things like that. Yeah, so it's really yeah. like formulaic at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. How did you find the Dirty Bird music? I think uh, Justin Martin popped up on my radar. Oh. Back in the day, um, and that led that led straight to Dirty Bird. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I found when I found that label. Like I knew it was like my goal right then to like start releasing on their label. Like that's all I wanted to do. Once I mm -hmm. found him, I was like, I have to actually start releasing music on on Dirty Bird, and it was like a massive thing for me. Yeah. And then it actually ended up happening, which is amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. How um, did you connect with them? Ah, oh, I, <laughs> I can't even remember. Um, Justin came and, and and did a headline show at my home club, Truth in. Um, in Johannesburg and like I went up to introduce myself and he like, gave me this huge hug and he's like dude I love your music and I was totally blown away because I had no idea like that these guys were even listening to my stuff um, and I think that was kind of like that was kind of like the end point and after that I think I managed to sign the clock to them which was the first release and then I did some stuff with Bruno Furlan which also ended up on Dirty Bird mm -hmm. so yeah it's uh it was a, it was a big uh, achievement for me to actually get yeah. some stuff on Dirty Bird. Yeah. So cool. How did you meet the people at Ultra? In South Africa, the like the uh, affiliate yeah. in South Africa. Um, I've worked with him many times oh. in the scene there. Yeah. Um, so when he brought the brand out, um, I just became a part of that billing. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's that's the only Ultra that I've that I've played so far. In, yeah. Um, in South Africa. And for releases? And for releases, that actually came through my agent. So I don't have an artist manager per se, but I do work with uh, someone who helps facilitate like my um, my signings and handles like all of my remix requests and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and she she managed to get that signed to, oh. uh, to Ultra. What do you love about Justin Martin's music? <laughs> uh, just the way that he kind of take he doesn't take anything too seriously like he's quite a fun dude yeah um and it reflects in his music so i just kind of like the way he uses bass lines yeah to tell stories and um 
he always plays them off against these quirky like melodies mm. and things like that and I feel like that's that's kind of like what I do as well yeah try and do the same thing tell me the inspirations behind into the morning um, I really just wanted to take on a project where I could challenge myself and kind of take myself out of the whole house box for a little while and just dip my toes into other genres and see if I could actually basically do it um, challenge myself and show people that I could do it and um, like usually it's, it's quite hard to kind of get out of the you know as a producer you expect it to like you know you drop a record and then you need to follow it up you need to follow it up you need to follow it up there's not really a chance to kind of experiment with other stuff so this this was a cool project because it gave me it gave me the chance to actually get out of that sort of cycle of just house music house music mm -hmm. and spend some time in the studio purposefully not writing house music oh. which was really which is really cool mm -hmm. um, and yeah it's that's why it's such a diverse album because I also didn't want to like slap 10, 10 house tracks that I had lying around on the hard drive and put it into like a thing and just call it an album. Mm. I actually wanted to, to to tell like a story and be like a cohesive project. Yeah. It actually meant something a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you say your music has changed since the early songs you made? Since so changed since when? The early songs, like the first uh, songs you ever made. <laughs> it's changed a few times. Uh, <laughs> When I when I when I started releasing, it was terrible music, <laughs> really bad, like fast. It was 100. It was 128 um, buzzy electro type stuff. And from there, I kind of found fidget, so it slowed down a little bit, but it was still really messy and noisy. And then I kind of went into tech house, so sped up again. And now I've kind of found I've kind of found the spot where I'm comfortable making. Um, I mean, you wouldn't call it bass house, but it's. It's like a mixture of different things. It's, there's some tech, there's some bass, there's some melody, there's some grits, there's like, just basically call it house music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what kind of, so do, in the future, do you want to make more of like in the morning that, that type of style or yeah, what's coming up? I, yeah, I think, like now I think it's, it's cool to, to be able to have the option of doing that kind of stuff now. So, I mean, obviously I'd like to follow up the album with another album at some point um, and kind of follow the same the same the same kind of vibe of, of not just house music and just doing some different stuff but um, the core focus right now is still still going to be on house mm -hmm. so it's still going to be on making club records for yeah now. yeah and what's your goal like to, to <coughs> tour more in other parts of the world or uh, yeah there's there's a few uh, things I still want to play and um, I still have goals that I haven't hit yet and I mean every year the goals change because some of them I reach um, but yeah the, the plan is to just keep touring for a while keep making music keep putting stuff out and yeah just see where it goes mm -hmm. yeah how do you say you have changed as a person <laughs> compared to any younger uh, I've got a load more experience now world experience <laughs> yeah um, I've uh, I've seen and done loads of things that have helped me grow like as a as an individual and made me more confident in myself and all of that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. i think touring like and getting to see all these different places and do all these different things is like one of the most rewarding experiences of the whole like music yeah. industry for sure what would you say have been your biggest challenges so far could be in personal life up to you no i think probably one of the biggest challenges is always is staying relevant mm. in this industry like it moves really really fast and um, like what's popular now might not be popular tomorrow it's one of the main reasons why um, I've kept my like career in video editing still going mm -hmm. because you never know like yeah, what's so gonna true. happen so um, yeah I think that was probably one of my main challenges because there was a there's a period in my career where my music was wasn't kind of gaining any traction with the audience so mm -hmm. went through a very quiet patch and it would have been very easy to just stop then and give up um, but yeah I kept going and that was like right before like the whole dirty bird thing and where I kind of found my feet mm -hmm. what kind of advice do you have for people going through that you just got to keep going really it sounds so it sounds mm -hmm. so cheesy but um, you just have to keep 
going at it. He's, this, in this industry, everything takes a load of time. Um, and it's easy to like, it's easy to give up and just kind of stop. But um, yeah, you just got to keep pushing through. Yeah. What does love mean to you? Love. Whew. Um, it's what makes you happy. It can be, uh, it can be loads of different things. You could love music, you can love a person, but it's at the end of the day, I think it's just what makes you feel comfortable and be yourself, basically, mm -hmm. and feel natural and normal. What do you love about your wife's personality? The fact that she can support me through all of this. Mm. So, I mean, I have the massive amount, like the hugest amount of respect for her because like touring is not easy at all. And this yeah. is just one thing. I mean, touring is not easy at all. And playing out, like going out playing shows every weekend is not easy. Like it's not easy to live with that. Um, a person who has to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so does she tour <coughs> with you for she, everything? She tours with me. Like, my, my thinking right from the beginning has been, like, what's the point of experiencing all of this cool stuff if you just, you know, your, your wife or the person you love is back home and they don't get to experience it. I and then love you, that. You go That's back, so cool. Yeah, you go back and, and you have all these memories and, like, they can be good and bad memories. I mean, often you, <laughs> you go through some serious stuff, mm -hmm. like, um, and you go back home and, like, you don't have anyone that you can kind of share that with and speak about that with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm very lucky that she she actually puts yeah. up with all of this. <laughs> yeah, and does she it. help you with her music, or what does she do? Well, she yeah, I mean, she does even indirectly. Just she supported me right from right from day one. Yeah. Um, on the production side and on the on the DJing side, and even now, like now that I've started touring a lot more, like she's still she's still supporting me, mm. and it's amazing. Yeah. Last question: What do you want to be remembered for? Everyone wants to be remembered for something. <laughs> um, I think it would be the best thing if I could be remembered for doing something new or helping helping South Africa expand out the music industry of South Africa, expand out to the rest of the world. So I mean, we have like we have massive talent in South Africa. We have really good producers. We have really good DJs. Um, but because we're so far away from the rest mm. of the world, like it's hard for us to break yeah. out. Um, and the scene kind of needs someone or people who are able to, you know, like perfect the craft and go out and tour and show the rest of the world that South Africa has like all of this talent mm -hmm. um, and that people need to take, yeah. take uh, notice of it. What so, do you think needs to be done though? Like a, a label or what do you think could catapult like South African music? Yeah, I mean, we, we have good labels in South Africa. Um, but like I said, it's just, it's really hard to, to break into the rest of the world for us. I don't know why, but, um, it's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, black coffee is doing like incredible things, obviously yeah. for the scene. Um, so I think, I think it actually just needs a bit more time. Mm. So I'm seeing some of the, the peers of mine, um, getting their first sort of international shows and breaking out oh, of the wow. local scene, which is also really exciting. Yeah. So, like if we could just keep going with that, I think that'd be that'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. The <laughs> Bye. best.